What's up you guys, so Max Team Symmetry here to bring you guys a new video today, and I'm here to bring you guys a, something a little different. Um, as of recently, you guys know that preparing for nationals, everything has been nationals, uh, everyone's been paying attention to Euros, and everything that's been going on in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh! basically re revolves around three decks, the main three decks, and the occasional decks that show up. Uh, either uh, topping or finish or doing quite well in the overall event. I know everyone is focusing on the World Championship Qualifier. I'm actually leaving for Chicago in exactly a week. I should be on my plane at this time right now. But I posted a status on Facebook saying that I kind of felt that I wanted to, you know, add some new content to my channel and basically show you guys uh, like a, a, an array of decks that I use on DN and in real life. Uh, when I feel like I'm really just like overwhelmed by the meta or tired of playing Elemental Dragons or tired of playing Prophecy or tired of playing Evil Sworn or whatever it may be, I basically have done this like for the whole time that I've ever played the game. Even when I played Rabbit, I would uh, switch between that and Dark World, that and other decks. And I've always had a lot of decks uh, on file and decks that I actually tried to build in real life. I actually have a binder that's a deck binder and it's basically if I want to play a deck, I basically can play it. There are a lot of old school decks. There's Infernities. There's a lot of decks that have actually come back that I can actually play now and the deck I have before you today is a deck uh, I did not build myself uh, I read an article on a uh, core TCG by uh, Robert Boyajian on uh, Herald of Perfection uh, it's a deck I actually always wanted to play in real life I liked the whole idea of Herald of Perfection because everyone knows that when I played Dino Rabbit I loved Lagi and Dolka I loved the complete lockdown and the complete control that those cards had and Herald of Perfection was a deck I actually wanted to pick up uh, after uh, reading some of those articles and just uh, seeing people play the deck in general. The thing that hindered me to do it though of course was the release of Evil Swarm because Ophion just basically shits on the entire deck and even even now I don't think playing the deck is really that great an option because if you do run into Evil Swarm you're gonna have a hard matchup. Uh, and then I saw uh, Robbie's article that was called Teched Out Herald, it's basically called Lock'em Out uh, Teched Out Herald. I'll have a link uh, down below for those of you that haven't been to Core TCG to check out their articles you should. Uh, there's a lot of good deck ideas there and this was the build that he had of Herald of Perfection. I've actually been testing this deck for a couple of weeks and uh, just testing it here on DN seldomly with friends and then uh, I actually had a friend that tried to build it in real life and use it at locals and he did pretty well considering uh, that it was mostly against all prophecies and e-dragons so uh, this deck is made to actually somehow compete in the the format right now so we're just gonna get into the list right now if you have any questions uh, you know leave them below and also like I said if you read the article to answer everything uh, you guys basically know Herald of Perfection if you don't uh, you will after watching this video uh, so the main vanillas are the three uh, Guacatino Megamis if you guys ever ran the deck I know a lot of people I think only ran maybe one to two of this card. In th in this build, he ran three. The main reason is that Advanced Ritual Art being back at two has given the deck at least a little more speed and consistency, and Guacatino is probably the best card at being a level six and it being a fairy. It fulfills the entire requirement for AVA, so the card is just good. Outside of that, you're not going to use it uh, except for discarding uh, for uh, to use Herald's effect or to use with Dawn of the Herald as the exact uh, amount to Ritual Summon. So outside of that, uh, that's what the card does. Uh, the two Christias, uh, you guys already know, basically shits on the format. It's just a really good card in general. Pr very easy to set up in this deck. Um, especially just like with the control of the graveyard and everything. Being able to drop four fairies and then summon this while you have Herald is basically game. Uh, the thing that really catch it, caught my attention was the three Jelen duos. Now, a lot of people are going to wonder, you know, why would you run Gel and Duo? You know, outside of it being a stall card. That's very true. Uh, that's the first thing I thought. It was like, it's a stall card. What am I supposed to do with it? You know, Blaster can pop it. They can use Blu-ray, switch it to attack, kill it. Like, there's not much. You know, if I take damage, it dies. You know, the card used to be amazing uh, several formats ago with Dark World and the side deck. But now it doesn't really even see that much play. Why is this card good? The reason why this card is in here is its other effect that everyone forgets is that it counts as a two-tribute uh, monster for a light fairy. So basically, if you have this on the field, you stall a turn, you contribute it for Christia. It's really good, but that's not really the main card you're trying to summon with it. As you see in the rest of the list, uh, this card that I'm sure a lot of people don't even know about, uh, and I didn't know about it until I read the article, is basically one of the main cards you summon with it. Uh, but when we get to it, I'll explain it. Uh, three, Herald of Orange Light. The card, you guys already know, is just amazing. You know, it's an excellent out to Ophion. In the article, Robbie mentioned how Herald, yeah, how Herald of Orange Light is one of your best outs to Ophion for when they use the effect to get... Uh, pandemic, you use uh, Herald of Orange Light completely negating the Ophion and destroying it. That's a really good out. It also helps circulate your graveyard for uh, Christia, so card's just really good. Plus, it's a tuner. Uh, one Honest, of course, they're all fairies. Uh, the three, Manju, the 10,000 hands. Uh, this card is used to search AVA or search Herald, whatever piece you need for the combo. 
Um, now, this is where it gets interesting. Three Medi on the Time Lord. Once again, when I saw this, you know, my mind was baffled just because I've never seen a deck that main decked Medi on outside of Chain Burn or maybe Final Countdown. Uh, the card is just really interesting. The people are wondering, why would you run this card? Like I said, the Evil Swarm matchup is a bitch because Ophion basically destroys the entire deck. However, being able to freely summon Medion and being able to swing past Ophion with this card is really good. Now, I know a lot of people tried this card in, uh, in their side decks if they were running uh, Dragon Ruler or whatever. But this card is actually really solid uh, in this deck because outside of the fact that it can get rid of Ophion if you're fortunate enough that the attack goes through and you bounce back cards, they take damage, etc., um, Medion is also a fairy, which is something, I mean, if you don't really look at the card, you don't really know that, but it is a fairy, so you can use it for a herald discard, so the card was just really good. That's what Robbie mentioned, and it really made uh, sense to me in the article as to why you would run this card. It's an additional out to Ophion and problem monsters like Synchros, XYZs, etc., Drago Sacks, and it's a fairy, so it circulates really well in the deck. Now, the really interesting card was Vanity's Ruler. This card basically is a one-sided Vanity's Fiend, and it says uh, it can't be special summoned. While this card is on the field, your opponent cannot special summon monsters. Now, the thing is is that you can't special summon it, so how do you summon this card? Basically, you do it with Gel and Duo, it being a two- uh, tribute, uh, it's counting for two tributes, you basically just tribute the Jalen Duo for Vanity's Ruler. You have this in Herald, it's like running another Christia. Basically you're running four Christias in the deck so that you can lock out the Dragon Ruler matchup, you can lock out a lot of matches that special summon a lot. I thought that was really interesting. I actually went and picked up uh, two copies of this card, they were ulties, they were only like a dollar each. It was really, really cool actually to see this card. The card looked like really nice ulti. I know I said I didn't like ultimates, but I actually made an exception this time because the card looked really badass in ultimate. so... Uh, that just was a really interesting card in the deck. And then, of course, the three uh, Herald of Perfections, the namesake of the deck. That's it for the monsters. As you guys can see, you're probably wondering, you know, what happens if you draw just a really clumpy hand? You hope to, like, you know, draw out of it to stall out, etc. But uh, usually summoning Herald turn one happens fairly often. You do have the ability to search it with the prep of rights, and you have the ability to draw into it with dualities, upstarts, etc. So uh, we'll get into the rest of the deck. So uh, two advanced ritual art. Cards, like, literally the best. You open this and Herald, reveal Herald, advanced ritual art, drop the Guacatino and summon it, and then you're good to go. Uh, one Book of Moon, because it's become one of the best spells again in the game. Uh, one Dawn of the Herald. This card's really interesting if you resolve it properly. If you have this with the Guacatino and then you remove this to get the Guacatino back to hand, it makes it really consistent so you can have the Herald and a discard. So I kind of like this card. Uh, I wasn't crazy about it at first, but uh, as it started to draw it at the right times, it uh, was a lot better. Uh, Heavy Storm, uh, two pot of duality to draw to the combo pieces, three preparation of rights. Gotta be honest, guys, this was an absolute bitch to get. This card, it was never really reprinted, at least to my knowledge. And this stupid thing was literally like $12. You guys can see, like, the prices. Like, literally, this thing was cost me, like, $12 a piece because it never been reprinted. And, like, no one has them, of course. Like, outside of people that play Herald, no one has them. And I literally had to go to my locals to get them. And it was just really hard to get this card. Um, yeah, very interesting card. I like this card a lot because it's another way to search Herald. And if you, you already use an AVA to summon a Herald, you can basically search another one. And then you can get AVA back due to its other effects. So I really like this card a lot. Um, of course, it adds the consistency of the deck. And then the three upstarts. The reason for the three upstarts is you want a 37 card deck, you want to draw to your combo pieces, and you want to go off uh, as soon as possible. The extra thousand may sound like a lot each time, but when you're drawing to a deck that basically just locks out your opponent and you know basically shuts off all their effects, uh, spell and traps, uh, etc., it's just a really good card in general. And then on to the traps, this is what uh, Robbie did that made it so that I could compete in this format. It's got three Imperial Iron Wall and one Solemn Judgment. Solemn Judgment is self-explanatory, one of the best cards in the game to get anything. Um, Imperial Iron Wall, really interesting because it completely shits on Dragon Ruler. Dragon Ruler has such a hard time against Imperial Iron Wall. I speak from, uh, experience when I played against decks that main deck this. Like, literally, like, I played against Evil Swarms that not only have an Opion on the field, but then flip an Imperial Iron Wall. It's basically GG at that point. Imperial Iron Wall is just really hurts dragons a lot. Outside of babies, you don't have a lot of ways to get around Imperial Iron Wall. Outside of the Blaster Effect, Heavy, MST, etc. Royal Decree. Uh, Imperial Iron Wall is just really good. It shuts down Dragon Rulers, and it's also really good against Prophecy because Fate is literally a nightmare. I can't even tell you guys. Like, that card is just a nightmare. I'm sure a lot of you know that. That's Public of Fate is literally one of the best cards, if not the best card in the deck, that literally just, like, locks you out with Jaugen. So Imperial Iron Wall is really interesting to see it in the main deck. It locks out a lot of interesting cards, and it's so bottomless. Uh, bottomless, a lot of other cards don't hurt you. Dimensional Fissure, um, not Dimensional Fissure, Dimensional Prison, etc., so I really like seeing that in the main deck. So yeah, so that's the main deck. It's 40 cards. Uh, this is a deck, like I said, that I didn't build myself. I have been just testing it, just wanting to have fun, wanting to take a break every here and there. 
uh, from playing meta decks just because I enjoy uh, playing fun decks like this. And I've always kind of liked Herald of Perfection. So this was a really interesting build I saw. And I think a lot of people, like I said, unless they read uh, the articles, would not know about this deck. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention. And then just on to the extra deck real quick. Uh, one Avenging Knight, Power Shaft. Uh, Colossal Fighter, Crimson Blader, uh, Flamvel, uh, no, I can't even pronounce that, but the Flamvel level 6 guy, uh, Gaia Knight, Scrap Dragon, onto the Synchro, uh, XYZs, we got Degusto Emerald, uh, Fairy Chero Girl, this card's pretty cool, you're able to draw a card with it using its effect, uh, if you ever overlay two, um, man, uh, was it two Manjus or two, um, Gel and Duos, pretty interesting, uh, Cowboy, uh, Gaia Charger, Gem Knight Pearl, uh, Exa Beetle, uh, Dijin, one Utopia, and one Paladino. This card's really good, um, obviously. You know, if it dies, you draw a card, you know, bring a monster to zero. The card's just really good. But yeah, this is just one of my fun decks that I've been using uh, every here and there on DN. People know I come on DN, and 95% of the time, I'm not here to play. I'm here to usually record. I don't really care for DN, to be honest. I'm waiting for Dev Pro to go on the MacBook so that I can play on there and play there a lot more consistently. I feel that the system they use is a lot better. I like playing it. It reminds me of the old uh, Game Boy Advance and a Nintendo DS games. But yeah, but for now, this is just one of the decks. Um, if you guys want to see more of the fun decks, you know, give this video a thumbs up. Um, I do have a lot more decks here, uh, in case people are wondering. Let's see. I have a bunch of decks, you guys, like, literally, that I just, you know, I come back to every once in a while. So, uh, outside of the format. And, like, this is something I would like to play, like, after Nationals over, just to play for fun, because I do like to play casually and competitively. I kind of try to keep a balance with it. But, uh, anyways, if you like the deck, uh, you know, give it a thumbs up. You know, comment below with your thoughts. I know a lot of you are going to say it seems really inconsistent. Um, you know, test it. You really need to know how to play this deck. It's... It, it's really interesting because it teaches me a lot like how to, how to change my play style uh, depending on the matchup, but I really do like it. When you do open Herald and several fairies, Imperial Iron Wall Judgment, you basically have game, and it's just really interesting to see uh, how few outs decks have to Herald of Perfection, so it definitely uh, sparked my attention. So uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, Definitely read the article by CoreTCG, and uh, let me know what you guys think. So just thumbs up the video, and thank you for watching.